Hi everyone. Got a little quick tip for you. And yes, it's quick. I'm not going to show you how I derive the shape that we're going to use for this. I'll do that in another video and it will be probably a little lengthy and there'll be a reason for it because I see people sometimes use this technique that I used here, sometimes not. And some people may find it useful, some not. But this one here, a lot may find useful. I'm in Corel Draw X6. Yeah, I know the X7's out, and I could have used X7. But I just want to show that, er, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, older versions can do this. And if you notice around my picture here, let's zoom in. Of this John Deere tractor that I pulled off the internet, I'm using this picture for a uh, project to you know, get me an idea how to, you know, compose the uh, object. I uh, found this picture off the internet just by searching for old uh, John Deere tractors or antique John Deere tractors. As you see, I put a um, pink outline around it. And the reason why I did that is, you know, hey, I want to uh, be able to cut this out. Now, I did notice that when I moved it over from my other project file, this didn't cut out, but you can easily enough real quickly put that in. <clears throat> but that's not really the the reason for this tutorial. Sometimes when you're doing layouts, uh, whether it's logo layout or a um, a maybe a newsletter or poster or something like that, you just want to be able to cut out an object and be able to use it. Now, yeah, we uh, Corel with Photo Paint and everything else has got Cut Out Lab and everything else, but for a hard edged object such as tractors, cars, parts of the human body, things like that. You can try that, but it, especially like in the uh, instance of this picture here where it has uh, JPEG compression, it may not be your best bet to get this. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to take this vector shape and actually cut out this object from this photograph. Now I'm saying, well, yeah, you can power clip it. Well, in a way, this does kind of make a power clip. But what it does is it also keeps your original objects just in case you need them for later on. And I'll show you that I do have an object. See, I got this highlighted. If I was to color this tractor object here, the outline in some sort of a color here, I'm hoping to get to a, uh, we'll just do purple. See, it turns it purple so you know it's a vector object that I've created. And I created this using uh, mostly shapes and then the uh, shape building tool to form those shapes out into the final final outline. <clears throat> the way you do this is to make sure that your bitmap and your object, neither one of them are locked. See, you can tell this is bitmap RGB and we zoom in to just make sure we got this aligned the way we want it. I'm not worried about this strap or this little handle here for my particular project, but if you want to go ahead and take the time to mask hey go ahead and put that into yours no problem center this back up okay make sure whoop looks like I have to undo that it looks like something moved alright now with both of these parts selected move my stage around a little bit alright there we go I'm going to highlight both of these like this. And I'm going to come up here to my, some people call it a boolean function, some people call it um, other things, uh, pathfinder functions is what Illustrator calls them. I'm going to go up here and choose intersect. Sorry about that folks, I just got a phone call. But after we've done the, the intersection, if we was to click here, we got that object. See, we got our original object, but check out this. Ta-da! A power clipped object. And you still have your original two here to work from. And to get to that object, once you click this one, just hold your control, it's not your control key, but your shift key, I believe it is. Nope. It's Alt. Oh, it ain't Alt, excuse me. Gosh dang it. I had a brain for it.
Here we go. Second object noun. It's wanting to be irritating right now, but then you can just move this out of the way. Or you can put it back or however you like, but you can select down and get it. But see, notice here that we got this. all cut out except for like I said that little piece that didn't translate out because I failed to check my thing before recording this but <clears throat> you guys get the idea now if you needed to you can do some repair work on the tires to make it perfect or if you're putting it into a different scene you know or not even going to use the tires and hey you've got at least the cut out of the tractor and everything else ready to go see I even cut out the little hood ornament here um or actually it's a radiator ornament I'm, I apologize but as you can see, I now got a I got a clip art, not clip art. I'm sorry. Whew! Near my tongue today. Um, I've got a cutout um, of the uh, object, and see it's transparent, and you can put it into a new home if you want to, or you can start your design, or <clears throat> anything you like to do. So you can even go in there and still edit the bitmap. You can break it apart um, if you want to separate the outline from this. So, I mean, you still got a lot you can do with this. Or if you just want to make this a permanent thing, all you got to do is once this is selected, if you don't want the edge no more, I know you just want it to be like you just cut it out and, hey, I'm not going to word wrap it or anything like that, then you can go up here to, of course, your bitmaps, convert your bitmap to something and uh, leave the transparent background and once it's done it will become a raster image that you can use in anything that you need however I would leave the clip <clears throat> clip object together like this in order to uh, facilitate possibly word wrapping or anything like that into this object so folks that's how I at least in Corel Draw do the clip masking for this. Yeah, you could do power clip and do power clip inside and everything else. It would do the same thing, um, which I will go ahead and show you now. Let's see, I'm going to take the raster object. I'm going to right click and say power clip inside. I'm going to choose this object here. See, it does roughly the same thing. And then we can go in here to edit power clip. Then I can position. the photo to better match the clip like so and once we're done I can say click that and it'll come back out and it'll do the same thing so you can either do it that one using a boolean operation or you can do it the other way either way you, the cool thing is about this way though is as I scroll over here to my object board oh, here it is right here I'm sorry I've used that to power clip I'm going to say just extract power clip here here we go go here we go that's what I want I want to bring this to the front <clears throat> Actually, I'll just order this to the back. Go. Oh, oh, okay. I know why it's got that little symbol in there. We got to tell it it's not a frame. But if we needed to, if we wanted this to be kind of like a um, a green color, or let's say like we're doing a logo. See, we can always do that logo kill this off and then hey we got an outline logo so not only do we have a picture that we can use for newsletters whatever but if you're doing a logo design that required a tractor such as this you you got them both knocked out in one shot so hopefully this little tip might help somebody please let me know in the comments I do apologize earlier for getting interrupted but you know that's how life is sometimes so everybody I hope everybody has a good one and I might, I'll probably come out a little bit later this week with the tutorial on how to use shapes to extract an object so, such as this. 
All right, everybody. Have a good one, and I do apologize for me falling all over myself as far as in my speech today. <laughs>